the National Road Safety Vision of India. Thank you very much, and I look forward to an excellent discussion. And thank you, Minister, for, share, for, for sharing your valuable time with us. Over to you, Arnab. Thank you so much, Art, for that emphatic message. And yes, indeed, uh, the bank group, we are, of course, committed to support India and, of course, the, you know, the private sector to achieve this. Uh, may I now move to actually the presentation which uh, we have, which is the title presentation, which my colleague uh, Veronica Rafo uh, and Deepan Bose would deliver. So if uh, Veronica and Deepan, if you could come in, please. And please do introduce yourself, Veronica. Thank you, Arnab. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to everyone. I'm Veronica Raffo. I'm a senior infrastructure specialist with the Transport Global Practice at the World Bank. I'll be sharing with you the work that we have been developing with different colleagues uh, from IFC and the World Bank group uh, at large. Um, Deepan has set it up. Um, can we move to the, so I'll, I'll tell you about uh, this initiative to mobilize private sector capital for road safety. First of all, let me uh, put this uh, work into context. As, as uh, Hart was referring to, you know, the poor status of global road safety and this massive level of underinvestment points to a market failure in how roads impact our societies and economies. Road transport has negative externalities that are not directly assumed by the agents causing them. And those that could benefit from improved road safety are not directly funding it. Therefore, we see that this situation is negating the, the necessary incentives to finance road safety interventions. We have, on the one hand, those who pay for, for these uh, weak road safety, the health sector, the insurance sector, the workplace, society at large, and on the other hand, those that hold the solution. So how do I address this problem, this lack of accountability of stakeholders causing road safety, this road safety market failure? We propose a solution to address this problem, and it is precisely relying on sustainable finance to mobilize private sector capital, to align the interests of, of the private sector and those of, of society at large, to generate those incentives that are missing and therefore facilitate the funding of road safety interventions through this alignment of incentives. Next, next slide, please. We, think, we see that the stage is actually set to resolve this failure. You know, first we have the knowledge, the evidence base to inform the right solutions in low and middle income countries. We know what needs to be done. We know which road safety interventions work. We have enough knowledge on how to explore monetization of the benefits of those road safety interventions. IDAP has developed this very uh, strong data and knowledge to precisely monetize those benefits. So we know what needs to be done and second, we also see in this stage how the private sector increasingly wants investments that not only do well, but also do good. You know, if we look at uh, the sustainable debt uh, market in, in the last year, if we look at the figures in 2020, we see that this impressive growth in sustainable finance, reaching $732 billion in 2020. And we see themes such as climate change and COVID-19 relief benefiting and leveraging this growing market. The question is, why is road safety not yet capitalizing on these trends? Even when road safety has a very clear mandate within the sustainable development goals, so how do we harness this movement? This initiative, next slide please, Deepan. Um, this initiative launched by the World Bank Group is an attempt precisely to capitalize on these trends and to address this market failure. How do we propose to do this? First, we propose to work on the identification of investable projects, projects with high impact and where we see a strong potential for the private sector uh, participation. Second, 
working on defining the necessary revenue sources. Funding can be generated by creating new source revenue sources, by redirecting revenues from the government, from end users, from corporates. Third, we, through this mobilization platform, we intend to facilitate access to capital, to, to precisely capitalize on, on this growth of the sustainable uh, finance market. To, Leveraging social and sustainability linked debt market for private financing of road safety. And then two more investment enablers. We know that in some instances we will need blended finance, catalytic capital to enhance financial viability, to de risk projects. And we know that in low and middle income countries we will need to provide technical assistance. This is precisely how this mobilization platform is being designed. Uh, with different elements and uh, agencies within the World Bank Group ready to, to, to help and, and, and chip in. Next slide, uh, Deepan. In, in this collaborative effort, we have different, um, as I said, different elements of the World Bank Group working together. Let me mention first the role that the World Bank Treasury is, is, is leading. They are engaging with private investors in the capital markets to raise awareness around road safety. As you know, the World Bank Treasury maintains a very long-term partnership with the private sector, driving the growth of the green and sustainable markets uh, uh, and, and working on different themes through, uh, for example, around the issues of nutrition, human capital, women and children's health, water and oceans, sustainable cities, and of course, green bonds, which which is the, the largest uh, share of, of this market. So how do we generate uh, this space for road safety? And, and we are working closely with the World Bank Treasury precisely to increase the visibility of road safety as a key development challenge around which we need to mobilize private sector capital through, through these financial instruments. Second, we also have, next slide please, Deepan, we also have IFC, the arm of the World Bank working with the private sector, pitching saving lives financings as part of their work uh, to mobilize private sector capital for, for road safety as a key development challenge. As you know, IFC has accumulated very strong credentials over, over the years on, on the sustainable debt market, uh, regularly tapping into this market for, for, for IFC's investments and even leading the design of associated framework on, on the, the, the necessary frameworks for monitoring and measuring different impacts. They've had a very strong leadership role in the, in the issuance of green bonds and social bonds and, and the impressive growth of, of these markets. So we are relying on IFC to start working on, with the private sector on, on bringing the experience that they have developed in green financings to the structuring of road safety related social and sustainability linked financings. A, a, a key role here for IFC in generating the incentive mechanisms uh, through, for example, um, pricing step downs or step ups associated with achieving a specific performance targets in road safety. Um, IFC can serve as sustainability coordinator, helping its clients uh, articulate the necessary frameworks, sustainability frameworks, the performance targets, the monitoring uh, tools. Uh, they can also, of course, provide transaction advice, and this is precisely what they've done in, in, the, in the pilot that uh, Hart was just referring to in, in Brazil on, on road PPPs. Um, so, as you see, we have all the different elements, IBRD teams, the Treasury, IFC, all working together to launch this mobilization platform to, to bring this solution, the solution of sustainable finance and, and innovative financial instruments to mobilize private sector capital for road safety. Let me now give you a couple of examples of how we are doing these very specific examples um, from, from different parts of the world. First, let me refer to uh, a pilot that we are working on in Colombia here, uh, we are working with the, the government of Colombia and the lead agency, the National Road Safety Agency, um, to mobilize part of the funding that ANSV 
uh, receives annually to support the National Road Safety Plan to use it in innovative ways to deploy and, mo and mobilize private capital for road safety. Um, the ANSB receives 3% uh, of premiums allocated, uh, of premiums from ins the insurance, compulsory third-party car insurance, uh, as part of its budget. So we are working with ANSB and, and, and other uh, agencies within the, the Colombian government to uh, use this funding as a form of blending instruments to improve program financial viability, for example, in improving performance targets within existing concessions, road concessions, or in new concessions, in the non-concession network as well, um, incentivizing better safety outcomes, and also working on the enabling supportive ecosystem, trying to improve uh, working with with the lead agency on, on improving data availability, enforcement capability um, to, to generate the necessary ecosystem to launch these uh, innovative financial instruments. In terms of next steps, uh, we will be launching a pilot with uh, concessions in Colombia to determine um, the, the road safety specific targets to identify the, the, these, these uh, uh, pilot corridors and we hope to be able to share with you uh, soon uh, the, the result of this work. Another um, pilot or, or, or experience, international experience that we wanted to share with you is the, the one that Hart was referring to, the, this road PPP in the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil, the Piracicaba Panorama Lot Brownfield project. Uh, here, IFC served as a transaction advisor, helping structure a new concession agreement that has incorporated very clear road safety targets based precisely on the IRAP methodology. Um, this new concession includes penalties if the concessionaires fail to meet the, tar the road safety targets, but also a bonus scheme in the form of penalty deduction if certain targets are achieved. Uh, as, as Hart mentioned, this has mobilized $3.4 billion dollars, US dollars in private capital uh, as part of this concession to invest in these road upgrades and to bring this section of the road network in Brazil to a three-star IRAP uh, standard or higher. So we, we think that the success of the commissioning of these uh, new concessions in, in the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil demonstrates the ability of road safety to be efficiently negotiated into new concession contracts in low and mid-income country contexts. And it also showcases how effective technical assistance, like the one provided by IFC as transaction advisor or IRAP as, as a, a lead knowledge organization can enhance existing business models in the road safety to correct the market failures that we were referring to before. And finally, let me share one final example uh, with you, a non-road PPP, one from, from Turkey. Um, in, this, uh, in this case, we are referring to a vehicle inspection program developed by the government of, of Turkey in 2008, basing uh, this experience on, on, on a very successful and well-proven system developed in Germany, but adapting it to its local market. Um, this concession stipulated specific targets uh, intended to improve road safety, including the withdrawal of 50,000 old vehicles from traffic and the expansion of the, of the network of vehicle inspection centers. Uh, the contract included revenue sharing schedules that aligned the private entity and the government's interests. So always designing these innovative schemes to precisely align those, those two interests. In this case, we saw a mobilization of 770 million US dollars of private investment, both for CAPEX yeah, and, the deployment of the, and, and, concession, and, the cons, and the payment of the concession fee. So um, let me just, just, just mention that this has been a, a very successful program. Uh, with a 40% reduction in fatalities and, and serious injuries oh, okay, okay. Um, since the launch of this program, um, with uh, the use of very innovative technology, integrated IT systems, real-time data processing, data storage, uh, and, and very real impact on, on the ground in, in terms of saving lives. So, 
uh, we can see that adapting uh, successful models from from high income context to low income or middle income countries uh, can work that if we bring the necessary knowledge the necessary TA technical assistance we can we can generate those successful uh, pilots um, these innovative PPP arrangements and, and try to to start correcting this this uh, market failure that is producing the very poor status of global road safety around the world and this massive level of underinvestment. Um, Deep and over to you now for more details on, on India. Thank you, uh, thank you Veronica. Uh, this is Deepan Bose, uh, Transport Specialist with the World Bank. Now, let me turn my focus a little bit uh, on India and you know a topic that already our Vice President uh, alluded to in his opening remarks is again, you know, a lot of the poor performance in road safety, which is uh, uh, a kind of a symptom for the lack of adequate investments. So not only from the country perspective, but even a UN study which was commissioned uh, quite a few years ago, and later this was published in um, uh, by the World Bank at the Stockholm Ministerial, that India alone needs up to 109 billion US dollars uh, in order to meet all the uh, relevant, uh, you know, uh, the SDG target on road safety, which is, uh, you know, uh, halving the number of uh, crash deaths by 2030. Now, one of the key challenges here is that this funding for the various national programs on road safety that comes primarily through the central budget and uh, allocation to the states and uh, union territories. So this really signifies that why it is so important that now we not only uh, seek uh, the engagement with the private sector as a key stakeholder, but also see this as a viable mechanism to reduce the financing gap. And you know, really look forward, uh, hopefully the discussion today we have at the workshop uh, highlights the importance of the private sector as a key stakeholder. Now, there are some really good advances that has happened in India in the, in the recent past, and the timing is very appropriate. The recently adopted Motor Vehicle Amendment Act of 2019 has several provisions that attract private partnerships and investors. And as the government has now successfully started uh, implementing the MBA through various rulemakings as well as institutional establishment, several uh, aspects are worth noticing. So, for example, the centerpiece or maybe the most transformative part about MBA is now the increased accountability for design consultants and contractors to manage the safety performance. And in today's workshop, we already saw some examples, but we are going to go into a lot more details in the second session on how the uh, concession agreements and other uh, infrastructure you know, uh, management teams uh, can you know, be incentivized to deliver better on road safety performance. Secondly, the MBA has a lot of emphasis on better governance, digitization, and use of IT-based technology. And again, I mean, needless to mention, this really opens up a real opportunity for partnership with the private sector uh, to deliver uh, these kind of uh, you know, provisions. A notable emphasis for the MBA is also on the post crash. And India quite successfully in many states, as you may be aware, that has uh, initiated a, a public private model for providing ambulance services uh, you know, with quite significant performance. I mean, some of the states have even achieved international benchmarks in terms of uh, uh, reducing the time to reach the uh, uh, reach the victims. And finally, uh, you know, the MBA also has a provision for the Motor Vehicle Accident Fund, which is primarily aimed at universal coverage for compensation, but this also provides an opportunity to uh, bring in other forms of, uh, you know, investment such as the CSR poolings, etc. Now, a question that everybody might have in their mind is that 
what is in it in the private sector in in you know in this all the reform talk that we are talking about so first and foremost it provides access to a new asset class and focused on road safety results impact as we say so the social bonds that raise through MORTH or NHI become relevant to attract or access new investors with low cost funds and funding schemes in a scenario where there is you know, realization that increasing death on the NHI is a cause of concern and is also leading to declining interest from the existing private sector investment. So hopefully this can turn around that situation. Secondly, there are several established brownfield projects where there is a steady, a steady stream of uh, revenues that can provide securitization through project uh, you know, revenues, as well as the pooling of CSR funds to complement the money that is raised through the social bonds. Hi, uh, Deepan, so, Deepan Arna, we are sorry to intervene. Actually, uh, you know, Honorable Minister has another engagement, so he's requesting if we can expedite a little bit in the next one minute, if we can finish, so that we can yeah. go to his. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll wrap up and, uh, you know, just to, you know, conclude that this, uh, you know, uh, raising of the private capital through the social bonds, again, in the long run, as the economic dividends are uh, was demonstrated, in terms of uh, saving lives and health, which also benefits the economy of India in general, as, as shown uh, previously. And before uh, concluding, my last, last slide is also the initiative undertaken by uh, the government of India to attract the private sector through the pooling of CSR funds, not only tax incentives, but also new regulations which allow pulled CSR funds towards targeted cause. I think this is a wonderful opportunity that we are seeing right now. Um, as mentioned previously by our Vice President, I mean, the zero fatality corridor, I mean, this is a significant uh, uh, pilot uh, success, would say, I mean, up to 50% reduction uh, that has been observed in three years. And now is the time we scale and replicate uh, such an initiative. So the advantage being that not only this provides uh, an excellent framework for building uh, our capacity for data collection, training, etc. But this also supplements the you know investment that is raised raised through social bonds, the the uh, you know from the complementing uh, investments from the CSR pool. So let me stop here, and I'm sure we will revisit these topics more in detail in our technical sessions coming up. But I, I really wish we have a very productive uh, you know, discussion on these topics and hear from our private sector partners who have joined today on their views and opinions. Thank you very much. Over to you, Arnav. Thank you so much, Veronica and Deepan. Uh, we would definitely get a chance to discuss this in detail in the technical session. Uh, so without much ado, now I would actually invite Honorable Minister for his keynote address. Uh, before I do that, sir, I wanted to sincerely thank you uh, for joining this event. We know that the parliament session is on and you had several meetings in, uh, just before that. You were meeting several chief ministers and, uh, you know, in spite of that, you have been able to join. Uh, that indeed shows, you, you know, your commitment and your encouragement as always to this cause of road safety. Over to you, sir, for your keynote address. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Hardwings. Thank you, Mr. Hart Wings Kefu, Vice President, South Asia Region, World Bank. All uh, respectable dignitaries, Mr. Arnab Bandopadhyay, Lead Transport Specialist and Infrastructure Program Leader, India. Uh, Mr. Ra Ram Shankar, Rama Shankar Pandey, Fiki Chair for uh, Chairman for Road Safety Subcommittee. The Managing Director, LI India <coughs> Lighting Limited, Ms. Ratna Ahuja, and uh, all respectable dignitaries and dear friends. It is really a pleasure for me that I am interacting with you because as far as it is really a great problem in India that we are facing the crucial problem with road accidents. Regarding it is my pleasure to be present virtually among the development finance community 
and the industry leaders to address them on a very important subject of private capital mobilization in road sector road safety firstly i would like to thank the world bank and all the corporates that are consistently working towards road safety and supporting government's initiatives towards reducing road accidents the road safety is an extremely major public health issue across the world and has become a challenge for the entire developing and low middle income countries like india india ranks first in the number of road accident death across the 199 countries reported in the world road statistics as per the as per the who global report on road safety india accounts for almost 11% of an accidents related to deaths in the world in india 1.5 lakh people die and about 5 lakh people are injured in 5 lakh road accidents every year as per the world bank and save life foundation study it is clear and evident that the road accidents put a heavy socio economic burden on the society and the nation as a whole due to fatalities in road accidents there is not only a loss of human life but importantly it has a greater impact in terms of loss of bread earner in a family a professional loss to the employer and all over loss to the economy road safety can bring a huge push the to the economy especially since we lost lose about 3% of our gdp on account of road accidents the rapid expansion in the road network monitor motorization and urbanization in india has been accompanied by the rise in road accidents resulting in injuries fatalities disabilities and hospitalization with severe socio economic cost across the country at the third global ministerial conference on road safety held in stockholm in sweden we have committed to reduce 50% of accident death by 2030 my vision is to achieve a 50% of reduction in road accident death by 2025 and zero accident related fatalities in the country by 2030 this is not an impossible task transport being a concurrent least subject according to the indian polity the road safety requires dedicated joint reform from all stakeholders from the central state municipal and even taluka levels In India national highway and state highways accounts for about 5% of the total road length these highways alone account for 61% of road accidents deaths which is an extremely large share the working age group of 18 to 60 accounted for a share of 84% in the total road accident deaths this data is troubling and worrisome for us particularly for the private sector as they are at continuous risk of losing their well trained employees to road accidents the private sector is a broad broad community and contributes significantly to the employment share and growth of the economy hence this community at a large scale can play a huge role in reducing road crashes via various measures for example the private sector companies can make road safety sent sanitize sensitization training and mandatory to all of its employees it is necessary to make our roads vehicles and infrastructure smarter to accommodate all its users with safety as a top priority addressing core road safety issues offer potential opportunities for the private sector and industry participation recently In an event organized by FICI I have launched the road safety consortium called as Safar and have released a white paper on road safety for the corporate world Efforts like this can be helpful for private sector companies to frame effective policy and appropriate practices towards improving road safety scenarios at work My ministry is striving hard to reduce road accidents death by restructuring and strengthening four e's of road safety that is one engineering road engineering and automobile engineering two enforcement three education 
and fourth emergency care services we are taking all necessary measures to prevent fatal road accidents and at least to save the human life therein the ministry is developing 22 access control greenfield express highways expanding width of roads and bridges removing the congestion points and is improving geometry and quality of roads but the government system cannot solely change the situation we are still facing many challenges and issues at the grassroots level for implementation with cooperation and contribution from the private sector we can save thousands of lives in road accidents your social consciousness social awareness and social responsibility towards road safety is very important and beneficial to the society the private sector can utilize their corporate social responsibility csr fund to address all four is of road safety the private sector can extend their services and contribute for systematic education and campaigns starting from the school level to ensure safe and responsible behavior on the road recently i have launched the road safety anthem for school children composed and sung by sri shankar mahadevan ji this initiative by icici lobard would help to connect more and more people for the cause of road safety the private companies can support ngos local bodies iits nits and engineering colleges and can take ownership in various road safety interventions generally it is seen that the dprs have lots of technical deficiencies it leads to creation of many black spots and so fatal road accidents 50% of road accidents are due to road engineering problems while a balance 15 to 20% of responsibility goes to drivers and 10 to 15% with automobile engineering there is a need to find out the reason behind road accidents and hence this also calls for performing post crash investigations which will help us find the true reason behind accidents the private sector can extend their cooperation and can provide sponsorship to engineering students third party agencies to study and submit the accident analysis report to the concerned authorities there is a district road safety committee constituted under the local mp to promote road safety awareness the private sector gets themselves associated with them and can give recommendations and solutions to safety issues further ministry has constituted national road safety council an independent body to carry out road safety activities in consultation with all stakeholders i am the chairman of this council and all corporates and industry partners are welcome to submit their proposals the council will support you Similarly 4000 NGOs across India are already working on various aspect of road safety you can provide financial support for good work for example an NGO named Jana Akrosh in Nagpur is formed by retired people who have a diverse set of experiences ideas and plans for which you can support and involve for conducting road safety activities the IIT Delhi based NGO called as Indian Road Safety Campaign led by mr dipanshu gupta is doing great work in the field of defensive driving and first responder training the private sector can provide and incubate such ngos who are doing phenomenal work in this area the private sector can assist and support towards adoption of advanced technologies like intelligent transport system its and digitalization for better enforcement of traffic laws and the grassroots levels specifically in tire 2 and tire 3 cities technology companies such as intel have also approached us with innovative proposal based on artificial intelligence to avoid collision and rash driving in city roads we are planning to start a pilot project in this technology very soon the collective action by the indian industry the multilateral finance institution civil society ngos and government can be an important avenues to address the issue of road safety in our country further insurance companies are direct beneficiaries 
of saved life. Hence, these companies can extend their cooperation and divert funds for various road safety interventions. Unfortunately, there is a very poor performance in this regard and there is a huge scope of improvement in approving claims and providing support to families who have faced losses. The private sector can specially contribute for procurement of upfront infrastructure such as deployment of ambulances and towway cranes, tow cranes, fire traders, tenders and vehicle cutter equipments. There are numerous examples of how we are willing to engage with the private sector and share our knowledge with them to achieve some specific targets and objectives. Uber and uh, Lenskart and recently partnered with us to offer free eye checkups for all drivers and distributed eye glasses across India worth rupees 1 crore at a subsidized rate. There is a requirement of 22 lakh drivers in the country for that 2,000 driving training centers are needed to be established, particularly in rural and taluka areas and 115 aspirant districts of the country. The private sector can invest via PPP model for the establishment of driving training centers, vehicle fitness and pollution check centers, which can also help in successful rollout for the vehicle scrapping policy. As shown in the presentation by World Bank, the evidence-based road safety interventions can prove to be a back-through step and it would help in prioritizing the black spot treatment and the extent, or extent of investment from private sector. I completely agree that there should be a responsibility and accountability check of concerned authorities for each road accident. The business models and international practices demonstrated by the World Bank Group here would certainly guide, encourage and mobilize private capital investment in road safety in India. The idea presented to me here today of private capital mobilization through social bonds, sustainability, linked bonds and pooling of CSR funds can be widely used for road safety improvement efforts. This is a welcome step. I invite the bank to offer a detailed presentation on this and I would be happy to support you in this regard. The initiative of Zero Fatality Corridor undertaken by Save Life Foundation by Sri Piyush Tiwari is a near to perfect example of how non-government entities can join hands with the government for improvement of issues of road engineering, monitoring, post-crash studies and patrolling along the national highways. Their earlier project on the Mumbai Pune Express Highway had led to a great success, where more than 52% of accidents were reduced in the last four years. I have particularly taken a note on the proposal presented by the World Bank on 100 such zero fatality corridors, where CSR funding can be used for developing the safety intervention strategies. I urge all private sector entities to proactively come forward for the development of social bonds. The corpus generated with your social contribution would be effectively used to finance projects such as zero fatality corridor and other road safety strategies on national scale. Here I also compliment Road Safety Committee of FIKI for actively engaging, engaging in sensitization and creating awareness among people about the need and essence of road safety. I am glad that FIKI and the World Bank have jointly initiated a dialogue on private financing in road safety and I would like to urge other corporates to support this initiative in their own way and capacity. This problem can certainly be addressed through collective efforts and we all need to contribute and play our role in this endeavor. I am confident that awareness and education on road safety at all levels, stronger personal commitment, public-private collaborations and continuous efforts will help in reducing accidents on Indian roads and improve road safety. I once again thank the World Bank and FIKI for inviting me here today. I am already, I am full supporting to you. It is the highest priority for me. I am very much sensitive about it because I am also 
in my life face a very very serious accident i understand the importance of the life particularly human being and that is the important thing for the country for the people to think seriously on this crucial subject once again thank you very much namaskar so many examples and so many avenues to explore and think out of the box uh, sir we have also noted your invitation so fiki ourselves from the world bank and also the as a civil society representative will definitely meet and take this initiative forward thanks again sir for very much for joining in the you know in this busy time and we know that you have another engagement so uh, thank you sir thank you sir okay uh, okay